This is bhindi or okra as it's called in the United States. It's some variation of vendakai in South Indian languages. And in Indian English, we call it lady's finger. Presumably a very scary looking lady. But when you cut it, you get this slimy, gooey substance. Most people don't like it. And inexperienced cooks will often end up making bhindi dishes where the sticky substance is still around. But while you might not like that slimy texture, it is remarkably good for your health. It is mucilage made from a combination of polysaccharides and glycoproteins. These polysaccharides are what we call soluble fiber. When they reach your small intestine, it can't absorb them because we cannot digest and break down those carbohydrates. We get no calories from this slime. So they form a mesh in the small intestine that in turn slows down the absorption of glucose into your blood. And this is a really good thing because repeated blood sugar spikes and crashes make the insulin in your body less effective over time and that results in diabetes. So if you're eating something like rice or maida, eating it with lots of bhindi sabji is going to reduce your long-term risk of developing diabetes. Don't just think in terms of not eating something. Many times it's good to add more things to your diet. Now let's step back a bit and try and understand how something we cannot even digest is so good for us. Food is made up of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and a range of micronutrients, which are vitamins, minerals, and other beneficial molecules like antioxidants, polyphenols, etc. Carbohydrates come in broadly five categories, and this is a very simplified list. One, simple sugars are single molecules like glucose, which is the universal currency of energy for all life on the planet. In fact, food is ultimately converted to glucose for cells to use as fuel. And fructose, which is the simple sugar found in fruits. Two, disaccharides are two simple sugars connected together, like sucrose, which is common white sugar, jaggery, etc., and lactose, which is found in milk. Three, oligosaccharides, which are three to 10 sugar molecules joined together in various ways. Some of these are digestible by us, some partially digestible, and some non-digestible. Examples, raffinose and stachyose found in rajma, which are non-digestible. Four, polysaccharides. These are made of more than 10 sugar molecules joined together. The most common one is starch, which we can digest very easily. And in fact, is the single category of carbs that gives human beings most of our calories. All grains like rice, wheat, millets, and root vegetables like potatoes contain a lot of starch. The other kind of polysaccharide is what we are interested in. Dietary fiber. It comes in two types. One, soluble fiber, which can absorb water and become a thick gel. Example is pectin, found in vegetables and fruits. In fact, when you cook a fruit or vegetable slowly and then let it cool down, it will thicken because of pectin. This is why jams have that gel-like consistency. Soluble fiber is not digested by your body, but serves as a rich buffet dinner for your gut bacteria. That mucilage in bhindi, soluble fiber. Two, insoluble fiber. Plants over millions of years have figured out how to make a carbohydrate that is nearly impossible to digest, unless you're a cow or goat. These are polysaccharides like cellulose and hemicellulose. The skin of every vegetable and fruit you eat is made of these two things. Not even the bacteria in your gut can break them down, so their primary goal is to make your trip to the bathroom in the morning comfortable. Five, the world famous none of the above. This is a new category of non-digestible carbohydrates that have also been shown to have some really beneficial health effects. For example, inulin found in garlic and onion is an excellent food for your gut bacteria. And beta-glucans found in oats and barley 
have cholesterol lowering effects our interest here is primarily on 3 4 not including starch and 5 now that you know what they are and what they do let's find out how to make sure your diet includes dietary fiber in ample quantities i'm going to give you two tiers basic and advanced if you don't want to complicate your life just focus on making sure that you eat a lot of the foods listed in the basic category all the items listed in basic are simple straightforward and don't involve too many changes in your diet however if you're really keen on maximizing the benefits of fiber try the ones in advanced as well basic legumes dals the more you eat them the better they are fantastic sources of oligosaccharides soluble and insoluble fiber and if you eat whole sabut dals it's even better but some people get digestive discomfort so keep that in mind leafy green vegetables all non starchy vegetables in general fruits but remember the really sweet ones also contain simple sugars so consider fruits like guavas and raw bananas and surprisingly leftover refrigerated rice and potatoes when starch is cooled down it retrogrades and becomes harder to digest resistant starch and that is a very good thing ignore all those scaremongers who tell you rice must not be kept in the fridge you should do just that leftover fridge rice is a fantastic way to keep blood sugar spikes down and a simple thing soak onions in diluted vinegar or lime juice and keep them in your fridge and just add them as a delicious condiment to all your meals raw onion can be too pungent but this is an excellent way to add complex non digestible carbohydrates to your diet remember category 5 alternatively consume onion raita regularly now let us get to advanced these are optional if it is practical for you berries like blueberries or blackberries are particularly rich in soluble fiber and antioxidants nuts and seeds like chia flax walnuts and almonds are also rich in fiber and the added bonus is protein and good fats whole grains millets quinoa etc consider switching rice or wheat with millets a few times a week and also brown rice instead of white rice once in a while whole grains are richer in fiber than polished grains now some common fiber myths number 1 raw vegetables have more fiber than cooked vegetables not true cooking does not reduce fiber content two more fiber is always good only up to a point too much might cause digestive discomfort and too much green leafy vegetables can also cause kidney stones three I need to eat whole grains like brown rice to get fiber. No, you can get a lot of fiber from just dals and fruits and vegetables. Let me end with this fascinating fact. When your gut bacteria ferment and digest fiber in your food, they produce short-chain fatty acids like butyrate and propionate. And this directly affects the production of hormones like serotonin via the gut brain connection so eating more vegetables literally makes you feel happier and that's not all butyrate also prevents inflammation in the brain and that plays a role in reducing depression and anxiety and finally dietary fiber does something your own willpower and discipline finds it very hard to do make you feel full and reduce the desire to keep eating fiber adds bulk to your meal without adding extra calories soluble fiber forms a gel like substance in the stomach while insoluble fiber adds bulk this increased volume activates stretch receptors in the stomach signaling fullness to the brain additionally the presence of fiber slows the stomach emptying which is the process by which food leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine prolonging the feeling of fullness and finally short chain fatty acids produced by happily fed gut bacteria encourage the production of hormones that signal fullness the internet is filled with magical single ingredient cures for weight loss because all of us find it impossible to do the only thing that actually works eat less food and guess what kind of food actually helps you eat less fiber